click on effects tab click on effects then in the fusion come to the timeline right click on it open the fusion page drag the media out here let's make some space here let's bring in an image let's say i bring in the youtube image let's bring a transform tool connect this to the transform tool just to resize it let's make the size 0 0.5 bring in a background node so essentially it sets the image such that it fits into the frame size of your resolution go to color set the alpha to zero you bring in a merge node and then you make sure you connect this background to the background node of the merge so whatever is connected to the merge node the merge node takes on the resolution of that item so i connect this here and if i drag this to the left viewer we have the youtube logo centered on the frame let's close the media pool so we have some space bring a fast noise node then bring an ellipse mask node i don't want it connected i want it to start different then shift spacebar bring in the displace node i'm going to connect this fast noise to the green input of the displaced node the green input of the displaced node is what you're going to use to deform whatever comes in through the orange input so i'm going to connect this ellipse mask not to the mask input but to the orange input of the displaced node let's drag this to the right viewer you see there are some slight deformities already first let's let's work on the fast noise node now for the fast noise node let's set the detail to 50 and set the contrast to 2. Now let's go to the ellipse mask. Now I want the ellipse mask to be bigger than this at the beginning. So I'm just going to keyframe the width here. But I want the width and height because if I increase the width here, it just increases. But I want both of them to increase simultaneously. So let's double click and reset that. I'm going to right click on height, click on expression, then click on this, connect it to width. So that way, if the width increases, the height increases too uniformly. Now, I want this to be pretty large at the beginning, covering the whole frame. So let's just set this to 1.2. And let's click on keyframe. Now let's go to the center frame. You know, this is 120 frames. So I'm just going to go to frame 60 and then drag this down to zero. For this ellipse mask, I'm going to click on the spline panel, click on width, click on zoom to fit, click on an empty part of the node grid, press Ctrl A on the keyboard, or you can just click on this button here to select all the keyframes. Then I'll just click on this to smoothen out, to ease in, ease out the keyframes. Close the spline editor. We're going to now use this. If we play this back now, you'll see we have something like this, it just contracts like so. Let's go to the middle here. Now for the displaced node, let's, let's make some adjustments, just a few adjustments here. Set the refraction strength to 1.5. 1 1.5 .5 is too much. Let's make it 1.2. So we see that when the thing comes through, it just comes like so rough. Good. Why I'm creating all of this is so that I can create the mask to generate the particle effect. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to bring in a transform node. I'm going to bring in a merge node. I'm going to connect the displaced node to the transform node. And connect the displaced node also to the foreground of this merge. I'm going to connect the output of this transform to the background of this merge. Let's do that again and there. Now for this transform, go to size and set the value to 2. If I drag this to the viewer here, and let's drag it to the middle here. You see we have that. But what we need to do now is go to this merge and go to the operator mode. Set that to held out. Right click on it. Let's swap inputs. And we drag this to the viewer 
you see we have this here. Because what happens here is if I go to this place, I drag this left view out. You see, this is the smaller one. It cuts out the larger one, which is this one. So we will get the merge too. That's what the held out does. Now we have the mask for the particle emitter. So what I'm going to do is bring in a mat control node, connect this to the garbage mat input of the mat control node, go to the mat control node, expand garbage mat and click invert. Now I'm going to drag the output of this merge here and connect it to the input of this mat control node. To make this look cleaner, I'll just hold down Alt on the keyboard and click on this line. And then I can drag this point up here. If I now pull this, I put it here, you see it's masking the image like so. So that will be what will drive the particle emitter. So we're going to move this back a bit, move the media out back a bit, bring in the particle emitter node. After the particle emitter node, shift space bar, bring in the P directional force node. And after this, bring in the particle turbulence node. And then finally, bring in the particle renderer node, connect that here. Now for the particle renderer node, let's just set that to 2D already. Now we make some adjustments on the particle emitter. On the particle emitter, we're going to set this value here to 50. We won't do much here, just set the color here to use color from region. And we move to style, change the style to blob, and the size of the blob set it to 0. Point, let's say 8.5 and then we go to fade controls I'll just set the out to 0 0.1 because I don't want the particles to just appear on the screen and just drop out I want them to fade off and pretty quickly too that's why I'm setting this fade out controls now for the particle emitter I now go to region set the region to bitmap I can now connect this mat control to the input here. If we go to the particle renderer node, we'll see we already have the makings of what we want. But we need to make some adjustments. So we click on p-directional force. For the direction here, set this to zero and set the direction z to minus 90. So that means it will move towards the screen and not away from the screen. Then we go to p turbulence set the x strength to 0, y strength to 0, and the z strength to 0 0.25. Leave the density as it is. Bring in a bitmap node, shift spacebar, bitmap, add, shift spacebar, add another bitmap node. Now we bring this bitmap node here. And I'm going to connect this displays here to this bitmap node. Now just a few settings we, that I didn't I forgot to set. For the ellipse node here, set the soft edge to 0 0.05. And then for this bitmap node, I leave it as is. I bring in a merge node. I connect this particle renderer to this bitmap node. I connect this bitmap node here. It's connected to the effect input. I disconnect that. I make sure it's connected to the background node. And I connect this other bitmap here to the foreground node. I want to swap that, the swap inputs. I want this to be on the foreground and this to be on the background. So I bring in another merge node, connect the output of this pre-render again to the foreground here. Then I bring in this output here. I connect it to the background here. And then this output of this merge, I'm going to connect that to the mask input here. So if I connect, I drag this to the viewer. Let's make it a single viewer. I go to PM meter, open up the inspector, go to the style, set the size of this to 1.5.
So it's it's working here, but it's not dissolving. Let's check what is happening here. Oh my bad. Sorry, this is supposed to be swapped. So I'm this is supposed to be on the background and this is supposed to be on the foreground. So I'm gonna right-click on this and swap impute. My bad. So this would be on the foreground, this would be on the background. My bad. So if I drag this to the viewer now, play it back. Like so. We just need to make a few adjustments. If you go to this ellipse mask node, we go to the spline editor. Let's click on here and show only selected tool. So it shows only the selected tool. Click on width, zoom to fit. Select all the keyframes by clicking on this. Then let's press T on the keyboard. The easy and set it to 80 or thereabout. Let's drag, drag till it gets about 80. Close the spline editor. Now let's play this back again. And there it is. Now we can add a little jazz to it. Let's click on merge. Shift space bar, bring in the trails node. For the trails node, we just make a few settings here. Set this to 0 0.9. And then the blur to two. Move to the first frame and click on restart, pre-roll. And let's drag media out here and you see how beautiful this now looks. So guys, that's it. Pretty straightforward stuff. If you had fun on this one, see you on the next one. Cheers.